Alex in Encarnation, Paraguay writes to me, he says, what makes an amplifier able to handle difficult loads like two ohm speakers or speakers their impedance curve is like a roller coaster? Is it the topology of the amplifier, the transistors that are used, the quantity of those transistors, the power rating? <laughs> how, how do you oversize an amplifier to handle a load? Please allow yourself to be a little bit technical. Okay. We've done a few of these whiteboard things before, and I thought maybe, well, let's try it again. All right, so let's talk power amps. A power amplifier comes in two stages. There is, and, and this triangle represents an amplifier block, okay? So a power amplifier comes in two stages. Hmm, and these pens hopefully come in something better. Okay, yeah, there you go. All right, and this, this is current or power, and this is voltage, if I can spell here, uh, and which is gain. Okay, so that's a power amplifier. And, the, and, and these two uh, can, some, can be related, typically are, but not always. So if I put in a, let's say this, this is one volt from here to here, one volt peak to peak, and I put that in, if this has a gain of, let's call it 30 for easy math, then what comes out of that is something that is 30 volts, right? So one volt in equals 30 volts out. This is where it gets loud. But if I were to just simply take that, this is nothing here. This is a preamp. This is what a preamp does. Now a preamp uh, typically only puts out about two volts and it can take anywhere from you know, point, point 0.01 or whatever. And it has maybe a gain of 20, 30, whatever it is. And or 0.1. So it'll take a much smaller voltage in, put a much smaller voltage out, so the maximum on a preamp would probably be like 2 volts because that's the maximum input on a power amplifier. Okay? So it's just the very input of a power amplifier is a preamplifier. It's just a big preamplifier. Okay, so there's our voltage gain stage. Now that's going to go into a current stage. All right, so now let's just talk about the current stage. Our current stage is going to take this big voltage. Here's our big voltage sine wave. And it's going to go into this thing, and it's going to come out the same size that it went in. Bink, bada, boom, right? And this is a big buffer. Hmm, they're after me. Um, so this buffer has a, a high input impedance. Let's call this... 10K and a very low output impedance, let's call this 0 0.1 uh, ohms, okay, 10K ohms. And that means that the signal from our preamp, remember we have over here? There's our preamp feeding into this thing and it has, oh, I don't know, this has got, you know, 100 ohms output impedance or something. And this has a relatively high input impedance. That means that this signal goes in, is captured perfectly, sent over here through the various stages, and then this is where all, and here's your power supply coming in like this, right? So now we're able to take and output a lot of power in order to drive this low impedance. Okay, how do we do that? And that's, this low impedance is, is the speaker, right? So a speaker has, let's call it a four ohm speaker, um, it, the speaker, remember, is just this, it's a coil of wire. Let's just, let's just look at a woofer. And this coil of wire, has, there's a magnet and there's a coil uh, and a, a cone. And this coil of wire gets energized by this power amplifier. Here's your output stage, right? And then here's ground. Bing, bada, boom. So as this 
rises up, it creates a magnetic field in here. That magnetic field pushes or pulls the woofer back and forth. This is our woofer cone and we hear sound. Why is it low impedance? Well, this coil of wire, if you were just to measure it, is very low. I mean, it's, there's not that many turns on it. It's just wire, okay? And so this impedance, um, it, it, and I'm not going to get into all of that, but let's just assume for now that this, because if you have too much wire, if you had a whole bunch of wire, it would be higher impedance, but then it would take more voltage to move the thing. So what we want is this amount of voltage with a certain amount of current to make this move the way we want. And to do that, we have to have what's called amps, amperage. And as we know, amps times volts equals watts. And we, so we think of it in terms of watts. So you gotta have lots of that. All right, I think we're getting off track here because I didn't want to go through all that. But, so how do we do that? All right, so real quick, at the input of this current stage, we're gonna draw it just real simple. We have what's the very first thing we have up here is, let's just call it a transistor. And then we go like this. Here's another transistor. Okay, and this is a, would be a PNP and this would be an NPN. Okay, that's, all right. And these are separated here by what's called a, a, a VBE multiplier, but we're not gonna get into that. Okay, so. Here's our voltage gain stage. It's driving that. And these two transistors are called a driver. Okay, so they're the first stage of conversion from high input impedance to low impedance. So let's say that this has, I don't know, 1K. And depending on the beta, which is the gain of these devices and the size of this resistor here, we're going to call this maybe, uh, oh, let's call it 10 ohms. We'll put a 10 ohm resistor in each one. And there's a certain amount of current going through this. This is plus up here and minus down here. Um, it, it, according, if there's enough beta difference, let's say this has a gain of, uh, of 100, um, then we can have the output of this uh, could all of a sudden be like, oh, 10 ohms. So if you put a 10 ohm resistor here, to ground, then whatever voltage is coming in here is going to be exactly coming out here without any kind of distortion or trouble. Okay? If you put a 1 ohm resistor here, all of a sudden that's going to say, oops, I can't make that much voltage because I don't have the current to do it, so it's going to squash it. You're going to get a, a smaller, uglier signal. This will be fine, but this is going to get ugly, okay? So we need more current, and we need successively more current because all of a sudden, you know, if, we're, if we want to put over, uh, you know, something even more. So what we do is we start adding stages, right? So the next one, it looks pretty much the same, like that, like this. Same looking thing, right? Um, transistors, and now all of a sudden these have gone down to like, typical is like a 0.1 ohm resistor, that's the emitter resistor, and this is 0 0.1, uh, and then that could be your output stage. But in direct answer to the question, how do we get lower and lower output impedance? We just add more and more of these, just on and on, just, to, just put another set in parallel, boom, 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 like that, and another, and ad nauseum, and just, just tie these things together. And you start adding on. That's why you see all those output transistors, because the more we have of those, the easier it is of a load, it e easier it is to drive something here and have the very same thing come out here, regardless of how low that impedance, this is our speaker, is. So if this drops down to two ohms or one ohm, you better have a whole bunch of these and you better have a very strong power supply that starts out all over here because we have to have the voltage. It, if the voltage, usually you have like, oh, plus 50 volts up here and, and maybe minus 50 over here. Um, if this voltage begins to drop down 
too far, then it can't support this output and that begins to collapse. So we have to have a very strong um, power supply and we get a strong power supply by bigger and bigger and bigger transformers that can convert the wall energy into this DC, lots and lots of capacity of storage over here. And if we have enough power supply, so this doesn't start collapsing and drawing down, then we have to have enough of these and you get a big, powerful amplifier. So, whew, okay, <laughs> hope that helped. Um, anyway, that's the deal. Okay, talk to you later.